everybody. Uh, this is Donald Bates. I'm here with uh, MSD at home. And we're just about to start a conversation with Alejandro Zearpolo. Uh, Alejandro's uh, back in New York right now, and he's just finishing off transferring a couple of files. Alejandro, as many of you will know, and I'm sure that's why you're here listening in, is a very important uh, both practicing architect, uh, educator, and theoretician. Uh, he's uh, well published and has a number of uh, books out on his work and has always operated both at the level of uh, practice, at the level of teaching and architectural education, but also working in many ways as a polemicist and certainly as a, a, a critic of architecture. And so today, part of the conversation we want to get into is a sort of new direction that uh, he's looking at and, and, and dealing with. Alejandro is the director of AZPML, uh, his architectural firm, which uh, came after having been one of the, the directors of Foreign Office Architects, FOA, which many of you will know about. Uh, a -A -P -A -Z -P -M -L operates out of uh, London, uh, New York, uh, Madrid and Lugano uh, and has had projects uh, around the world and continuing to produce uh, major works uh, for us to see. So um, without too much further ado, I'm going to see if we can go back to Alejandro uh, and see if he's ready. Alejandro, are, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, first of all, uh, I'm very sorry for this uh, delay. There is something strange happening with, with my computer. This is, I mean, I guess uh, everybody's trying to get uh, familiar with, uh, with this uh, technology and, and today everything seems to be going wrong. Or, or let's say this week, everything has been going uh, wrong, starting with, uh, with the kind of mistaken appointment last uh, Wednesday for which I apologize for those of you who were, uh, who were there. Um, so the, the uh, presentation that I, that I have uh, prepared is, is the first time I, I do it is something that I've been working on uh, for some time. I, I, I think that uh, in some ways it is, it is obviously derived or connected to many of the, the, the projects or the work that I've done in the, in the past. But I think it, it, uh, the reason why I, I uh, brought it is because uh, this uh, title of uh, of your uh, conference or your lecture series is uh, is uh, in the age of covid-19 and i think that uh, that is a perfect opportunity to put forward some of the arguments that i have been uh, working on uh, for <clears throat> for some time which i i think it, they have been uh, in a way confirmed or or uh, become uh, uh, more opportunistic uh, with uh, with this uh, new uh, situations. There are three themes that uh, um, I'm going to talk about. One of them is truth, the other one is um, is posthumanism, and the other one is uh, is what I call neocon uh, architecture. Ironically, but uh, but uh, maybe not uh, not uh, completely ironically. Uh, and and so I am trying to bring these uh, three. Um, subjects uh, together. There is, there is a lot of material uh, that I that I found when I was uh, preparing the the lecture. So I'm I'm going to try to to move uh, quickly, and we can basically stop whenever you you think um, uh, done uh, that uh, that we should move on to the to the questions and, and answers. Okay. So the, I'm going to start uh, with this uh, uh, citation, which uh, which is uh, a citation by. Uh, um, um, uh, adaptive uh, uh, biologist uh, uh, Daniel Dennett, which uh, which I I like very much, um, um, which uh, says as you can read, postmodernism, the school of thought that proclaim there are no truths, only interpretations, has largely played itself out in absurdity. But it has left behind the generation of academics in the humanities, disabled by their their distrust of the very idea of truth and their their, their disrespect for evidence, settling for conversations in which nobody is wrong and not, nothing can be confirmed, only asserted with whatever style you can master. Now, I, I think that this is the paradigm in which the discipline has been working also, uh, uh, maybe as partially one of the humanities, um, 
In Princeton, for example, architecture is a humanity in some other places is uh, is a technology. Uh, <clears throat> but I think what is uh, what is interesting of this uh, new situation that uh, that uh, COVID-19 has put forward is that it signals uh, uh, perhaps a new era where evidence will start prevailing over interpretation. And I think that that is something that uh, that will change the way we practice uh, architecture. So people like Trump or, or Bolsonaro, alongside intelligent, propon intelligent design proponents and climate change deniers, only exist because the whole intellectual mach machine of the era that, uh, that we just uh, went through is geared up to respect all opinions for the sake of promote, promoting diversity and create some sort of false complexity, I believe. Uh, so what I, I think is uh, happening now is that we are perhaps, or that's the, 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 the proposal that I'm making, we are entering a, a, a new uh, stage, which I call the after post truth, in which these uh, three subjects that I uh, put uh, forward first, um, I, I think are going to become increasingly <clears throat> Uh, 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 interesting or, or important. Uh, so, so this this uh, contempt for for truth um, um, has, uh, I believe, a clear intellectual origin uh, and, and also a very important architectural reference, which which is uh, has come back to life uh, maybe recently, which is postmodernism, uh, and and I think that uh, that uh, maybe. Uh, that is what uh, what uh, makes me think that architects are, uh, to some degree, also responsible for uh, having uh, been uh, uh, concentrated for a long time in this idea of interpretation or diversity, and, and perhaps uh, have become increasingly skeptical about the idea of uh, an architectural truth and, and however kind of dangerous and, and problematic uh, uh, to, to, to think that there is an architectural truth is, uh, I believe that uh, one way or another, maybe that's the way uh, uh, the, 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 the discipline has to start uh, uh, working um, uh, in, in this new new age. Which, so, so uh, basically, uh, th this is the, 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 the type of uh, uh, life where we, uh, where we, or the type of uh, culture where we live in, where lying has become uh, legitimate because there is uh, no, no clear truth. And, and therefore, uh, it doesn't matter if you, if you lie. It's a, it's a culture where you can buy virtual constituencies. Uh, it's a culture where there are huge resources effectively devoted to create uh, false uh, realities that people uh, can buy, um, uh, and whether whether we like, I mean, you 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 see the people that are in the in the picture. Uh, maybe you know some of them. Uh, maybe you know some of the things that uh, that are uh, uh, described in the in the in the slide. Whether you like these guys or not, um, maybe these are the, the first uh, posthuman uh, politicians. Uh, um, and uh, and they represent what I <clears throat> I think is is, is quite an, an interesting um, label. Uh, uh, they they occupy a space that I would uh, I would uh, call uh, scientific uh, populism. Um, so Bannon, Mercer, Wiley, Cummings uh, are are perhaps uh, these uh, these uh, beginners of a, of a, uh, of a new situation, which perhaps we. I don't agree with them, but but nevertheless, I think that they are interesting, and I am very interested in 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 trying to to think uh, what what will their their policies uh, look like. If these are the first uh, posthuman uh, politicians, uh, how is their policies uh, going to to look like? And and so th th these guys are uh, sometimes <clears throat> computer scientists who who. Uh, has have uh, become phenomenally rich out of investing without having a clue of uh, of what the companies that they invested on uh, were doing, or who have become phenomenally important in politics uh, without necessarily being even part of a political party. And I think uh, one of the things that is for me most interesting about these uh, these guys is that, uh, uh, for example, Steve Bannon. I don't know whether you know, uh, but Steve Bannon is an architect by training. His BA is in architecture. 
and uh, Christopher Wiley, who, who you may know is, is, the, is the guy who, the, the whistleblower of, uh, of Cambridge Analytica, who theoretically was working for Steve Bannon at, uh, at some point, is now the head of H&M. Um, there are, they can do cities. Uh, uh, Steve Bannon was, interestingly, the, the CEO of uh, Biosphere uh, 2 in, in Arizona, which, uh, uh, which uh, you may, as you may know, it, it remains the largest closed uh, ecological system ever uh, created. So he is an expert uh, also at creating uh, new natures, new uh, realities. Uh, <clears throat> uh, while uh, Wiley, uh, for example, one of the, the, the things that he uh, explains as a kind of uh, expert in data and fashion uh, is how uh, how uh, fashion is is uh, or aesthetics are one of the uh, the uh, most uh, uh, important uh, things that uh, uh, a new, for example, fascist uh, movements. Uh, this is this is a sentence by by uh, Wiley. Uh, when we think about fascist movements, the first thing they do is to develop an aesthetic illustrating his point with the uniforms of the Nazi party and more recently the alt-right supremacists who in August 2017 marched through Charlottesville in a uniform of chinos and white polo uh, shirts. Bannon, for example, is himself fascinated with Mussolini and, and probably that's why he, he uses this kind of trademark uh, double uh, camiche anera, uh, black, uh, black shirt. Uh, so there, there is, a, there is a, a, a something in, in, in this um, a new type of uh, agents that uh, that is very strongly connected with uh, with aesthetics, uh, and and so they are people who are uh, at once being able to uh, manipulate uh, computers, uh, uh, computers vote, machines vote for these people, uh, but they are also uh, very capable of engaging with aesthetics and are the guys who are behind these other guys who maybe are not the, the, the scientific populists, but the dumb, uh, the dumb populists, uh, uh, who nevertheless are the guys who, who have these other people in the background actually doing the real intellectual <clears throat> uh, work. So in this, uh, in this uh, scenario in which uh, we, the people uh, specialized in data uh, and, and aesthetics are uh, actually being able to, to disrupt entirely the, the the political uh, systems uh, with Brexit or with uh, with the election of uh, of Trump, <clears throat> what I think is is uh, is very important uh, for for everybody, but but I think also for architects is to learn from them. I, I uh, whether you like their politics or not, uh, I think that is uh, is very interesting what they do. Uh, and one of the things they do is uh, is uh, create these uh, fictions out of out of science. But there are other ways of using science actually to uh, to perhaps uh, try approximations uh, to truth. And and this is where I believe that one of the one of the things that is going to happen as a result of of this what I call the after post uh, truth. Uh, is that uh, that there will be a scientific turn that uh, we are already starting to experience uh, over the COVID uh, crisis, um, uh, and and so the, that uh, that situation uh, where evidence, measurability, and data uh, are now things that we can uh, play with, uh, we we need to find a way of playing with them uh, towards uh, uh, this new belief in a certain form of truth or in a certain uh, ontology of the of the world and there are there are uh, many uh, interesting things that data scientists uh, talk about um, which are obviously very difficult uh, questions for them and, and and for everybody but what we are uh, talking here is is perhaps the the, the creation or the, the verification of what we can call a, a post-human truth, a truth that is not uh, based only on on kind of human observation or hu human experience, but but on on data, on on good enough data, which is a, which is a sentence that uh, sometimes they they uh, the, the data scientists uh, talk about. So uh, the, the 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 sheer mass of data that we can access is what enable us to use maybe not such a perfect quality scientific data in order to construct 
uh, reality. And, and so that's the phenomenon of, of Wiki, uh, Wikipedia versus uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. So the experts, uh, wise uh, people um, who, who know and who, who uh, tell other people what uh, the world is, uh, should be defined uh, like, as opposed to lots of people <clears throat> bringing in uh, inputs in, into, into these larger uh, uh, approximations to uh, perhaps a new uh, form of truth. And of course, there are may, maybe also new uh, uh, truths that emerge out of these, uh, <clears throat> uh, these uh, 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 technologies uh, through correlation, for example, and some of them are actually uh, funny, uh, uh, but maybe that may be interesting. I I, I don't know what uh, uh, what uh, maybe some of these uh, possibilities that we have today uh, to um, analyze the world through machines and through correlations will uh, will produce. Um, <clears throat> for sure, um, uh, these uh, new technologies, th these new um, possibilities of measuring uh, mechanically, artificially. Uh, the world uh, are opening uh, technologies that, that may create uh, entirely new uh, organizations and entirely new forms of, uh, of truth that, uh, that I think uh, uh, we may want to, to, to think about if we are interested in, in that project of, uh, of retrieving some uh, possibility of uh, contemporary uh, truth. And in these technologies, uh, uh, measurability, precision, uh, is crucial, is, uh, uh, is a precision that is no longer uh, human. The naked eye cannot, uh, cannot uh, operate as well as uh, machines uh, can. The obvious gesture the, the is uh, irrelevant compared to the minute detail uh, of uh, the face, for example, in, in, in this type of uh, face, <coughs> face reading uh, technologies uh, and this is where perhaps also uh, some of these uh, systems uh, uh, this this detail uh, and uh, detail will be maybe one of the, the, the things that I will talk about uh, at the end when I talk again about some sort of neocon uh, architecture uh, becomes important because the detail uh, perhaps is uh, where um, a building uh, a design can connect to wider ecologies that transcend the conventional forms of, of human communication mediated by canons, by languages, uh, and, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> uh, we, we, we have uh, also uh, seen the effect of, of geotagging uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, some of these technologies that perhaps are going to uh, enable us to rethink the way we organize uh, uh, cities. Uh, and, and in parallel, uh, I think one of the interesting things that, uh, that has been happening uh, is that in parallel with these uh, uh, scientific uh, populists, there are also, uh, there are also other type of, uh, of populisms that are becoming important uh, in the, in the post-truth uh, world or were becoming important in the post-truth world and maybe they will remain important in the, in the after post-truth uh, world um, where uh, you know, uh, and they, they have become important and they have had, I think, a very important uh, effect, ideologically speaking, on architects of a certain uh, generation, uh, people like Aravena, people like Assemble, people like Santiago Cirujeda or Eyal Weizmann are, are working very much in, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, realm uh, uh, in which you know, there are demonstrations, there are uh, di direct action uh, about uh, 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 lack of democracy, gender inequality, uh, racial discrimination, national and, and cultural identity. Identity is, is part of this uh, other form of, uh, of populism, which, which is also, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, co-opted by by people like uh, like Bannon and and, and uh, I, I think it's interesting to uh, uh, to see them as, as another uh, very important contemporary force uh, that uh, that we perhaps uh, may uh, may want to uh, uh, to think about. The, this is a particularly interesting one, the, the Gilets Jaunes uh, in in Paris. 
uh, were, were which, which may be the, the, the last uh, humanists. Uh, uh, so humans versus the, the earth. When, when people are uh, talking uh, perhaps about, uh, <clears throat> uh, about uh, ecological taxes, like, like uh, Macron was talking, clashes against people who are uh, mixing uh, complaints about, uh, about these ecological taxes on, 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 on fuels, uh, connected to maybe other forms of uh, revin uh, social, uh, social uh, demonstration, social uh, reivindication. Uh, I, I don't know whether this, this uh, video is going gonna, is gonna to run. Uh, this is perhaps the problem of having change. Uh, no, it doesn't run. It doesn't matter. Uh, it, it, is, uh, it is maybe, is uh, Bill Clinton introducing uh, the human genome on, on January 26, 2000? In which uh, what he uh, says in, in this video, which unfortunately I cannot I cannot show you, is that uh, that uh, the the depth uh, of the DNA, so the, the 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 human traits, the human traits that these activists are putting at the center of their activity, are nothing uh, compared to the depth of the of the DNA, the human uh, DNA uh, chain. Uh, so so the, the, this, uh, the, the, this is uh, um, one of the, of the ideas that, I, that then I, after talking about the idea of truth or the construction of some sort of synthetic, uh, new synthetic uh, truth using uh, certain uh, technologies, I, I would like to, to shift to the question of, of posthumanism uh, or the um, the posthuman and as as uh, as uh, as a very uh, relevant uh, context to uh, in which we uh, architects and, and other people um, uh, also uh, have to uh, to work in, in which perhaps uh, is not so important for cities or for for architecture uh, the human uh, the human needs the human functions. Uh, but on the contrary, there are other things that are suddenly becoming much more important for city and for architecture. And that was the subject of, of the, the Seoul Biennale in 2017, uh, which I directed or co-directed, uh, which was called Imminent Commons, but should have been called the Posthuman uh, City, and, and whose main idea uh, was that all the, 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 the theories of, uh, of urbanism um, in the past, both the modernist uh, functions, but also the postmodernism uh, uh, idea of community or identity uh, were all the time gravitating about the, the, the human as the, the main subject of uh, concern. Uh, but what happens with, uh, with cities when, when those human concerns uh, perhaps become less interesting? And the whole idea of the Biennale was actually to try to define a number of categories in which we can uh, re, um, reanalyze uh, cities uh, in the rise of robots, in the Anthropocene, we can analyze cities under uh, a non-human focus. Uh, and so there were nine categories that were basically taking the, 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 the four arcane uh, elements of, uh, of uh, ancient cosmologies, air, water, fire, and earth, uh, as uh, some of these uh, new, very crucial, politically charged uh, concerns, which which are also uh, very deeply related uh, to uh, architecture as a as a practice, uh, and then uh, four other uh, categories uh, that uh, have to do with technologies, basically, or or with technologies as as what McLuhan called the the extensions of, of man. So so there was uh, urban air urban water, these, these are, uh, if you want, a kind of new proposal for a, for a contemporary Athens charter in which we don't uh, look at the city in terms of functions, human functions, uh, but we are also not concerned too much with uh, communities or identities, uh, and we simply look at, at elements, uh, urban energy, which stands for fire, urban biomass, which stands for earth in the kind of uh, arcane cosmologies, uh, and then sensing the, the, the race of artificial sensing as, a, as an incredible uh, force, uh, uh, communications, 
mobility also is something that uh, that uh, can be analyzed uh, by itself and that's not transport is mobility uh, 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 production and recycling those were the 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 the, the, the different categories in which this uh, this kind of revision of the Athens charter uh, that we proposed uh, was uh, structured and <clears throat> and so uh, wh who are the enemies of uh, or the enemies who are the 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 the, the, the theoretical intellectual uh, approximations that are no longer that that uh, relevant uh, within this new uh, posthuman perspective uh, the the phenomenologists so uh, as opposed to to you know embrace of uh, shadows and the kind of mystery uh, and and poetry and feeling of uh, of architecture uh, the ruthless uh, um, the ruthless scientific urbanism of uh, Hilbert Seimer uh, uh, to to kind of uh, go back maybe to a, to a figure that uh, that is anti postmodern and anti uh, phenomenological. Uh, the other one is tectonics. I think tectonics and phenomenology have been the two uh, approaches, intellectual approaches that have um, uh, that have, uh, um, uh, in a way, co-opted uh, uh, building cultures, uh, uh, building theories, uh, and uh, in the last uh, in the last few uh, decades, uh, which I, I think are going to become progressively. And interesting, and, and uh, again, another one of the projects that I was involved uh, was, uh, uh, which is a, a book that hopefully, if uh, my editors uh, ever get out of the crisis of uh, COVID, uh, will be published uh, soon. Um, <clears throat> uh, which is which started with the uh, with the uh, the 2014 uh, elements uh, Biennale. Uh, uh, with an idea of uh, of the envelope or, or the envelope as a as a as a subject of uh, of analysis in which uh, in which uh, this element uh, was scientifically uh, analyzed in in different in different categories that then were uh, uh, put against uh, uh, historical moments so that we would see when uh, different uh, different typologies of uh, of envelope technologies would uh, would evolve and and the, the whole idea and i would like to hear go back to this uh, problem of or this question of the detail as something that that uh, as opposed to the gesture to the kind of uh, uh, um, um, f fancy uh, gesture of of an architect becomes for me now much uh, much more interesting and, and you know the, these were some of the some of the, the uh, analysis or some of the the work that we were doing uh, for uh, that exhibition in the Biennale <clears throat> uh, in which we were given by by uh, by facade uh, manufacturers this material in which we we could see the the mock-up of the building next to the building itself and systematically through every one of them the mock-up was far more interesting than the building, uh, and and so uh, the, the, that that is what made us uh, suspect that actually in the detail, uh, as Miss used to say, uh, God is in the detail. Uh, but but maybe actually uh, uh, suddenly the detail becomes the vehicle that enables us uh, to engage more more uh, more effectively with uh, with uh, contemporary. Ecology. So the, the 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 argument here is that that's the way we used to draw facades with kind of double uh, parallel lines uh, that uh, that were laid out uh, within a certain uh, composition. But actually, within this uh, thinness of the parallel lines, what we see is this, and these are all the mechanisms that are that are stopping or enabling the flow of air, of water, of energy. Uh, uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So all these elements that that we have identified as uh, as crucial, as critical uh, areas of uh, concern and, and uh, areas of concern that are incredibly loaded uh, politically uh, now are contained in these uh, in these constructions that most uh, most of us 
never get to uh, to understand and and and, and so uh, the the understanding of uh, of details is perhaps one of the the, the frontiers that that i believe uh, maybe new narratives of, of architecture will need to um, uh, to enact the kind of uh, close up uh, the, the uh, view of uh, of buildings as opposed to the grand uh, gesture uh, and the, the 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 precision with which these uh, elements are done and and how uh, uh, in a way maybe these elements will enable us uh, eventually to develop entirely new uh, artificial sensibilities like the ones that we are starting to have because we have the access to a FLIR uh, camera. Uh, so another another project perhaps that, that has to do with this uh, scientific uh, turn uh, is a project from the office. It's actually more a project of Maider than, than my project, Maider Yaguno, my, my partner, who is, who is an architect but, but also a kind of uh, scientist uh, and, and has been developing this uh, city reader a project that uh, that has to do uh, with uh, uh, I'm going to go very quickly, uh, but uh, has to do with this uh, possibility of of now constructing high spatial temporal uh, resolutions by using uh, mobile uh, sensing uh, technology. So technologies that uh, can be installed in in in, in delivery trucks or garbage, garbage trucks or buses uh, can. Uh, measure uh, uh, by accumulation again, like Wikipedia, like like big data uh, paradigms, uh, by accumulation of many of these cheap uh, uh, sensors, we can we can increasingly get a, a precise measure of environmental parameters in in cities. And so, Chi has been working on developing this kit that can be installed. <clears throat> I'm not going to. Uh, uh, explain it. These are, I mean, the, the, I don't even know what these things are actually. Uh, she, she knows. So, so, but, but maybe, maybe this is this is interesting because is how do you see New York through this uh, kit, uh, uh, where you start looking at the patterns that appear when you go from uh, the financial uh, district to Soho to Midtown uh, to the Upper Midwest. And what happens uh, then when you uh, stop the car and so on and so forth? So, so these are now uh, new uh, areas of, of this approximation to a new uh, form of urban truth that uh, that that uh, that we are becoming increasingly interest, interested in 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 uh, in playing with. These are also uh, augmented reality. Um, systems that uh, come with it uh, and and so I, I mean because maybe I'm, I'm already uh, quite late how much time do we have uh, Don? you 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 can uh, stop whenever whenever Look, I, you, yeah uh, why don't you I, I mean maybe if you want to present for another five minutes or so because we got yeah. a little bit late and then okay. we can start uh, so, having a conversation just, just let me let me introduce this last yeah. idea which is the most uh, polemical, perhaps, of all, uh, which is this idea of the neocon architecture, uh, whose, which, whose theory is, uh, is that uh, uh, we have been uh, living for a while in, in, a, in, in, a, in an architectural culture where difference, uh, where I, I do it differently, I, I, I do it new, uh, the new, the different, uh, the extravagant, the excessive, uh, have been the the the, the main uh, uh, concern of of the discipline, uh, but but actually the 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 concerns of the people out there is uh, are about the con uh, the conservation of energy, the conservation of biodiversity, the conservation of the urban fabric, the conservation of the of the environment. Uh, so there is a, there is a certain uh, uh, shift, I think, of uh, cultural values. Which I think will probably be intensified by by the, the COVID uh, crisis, in which these uh, uh, conservative uh, approaches are uh, suddenly becoming more interesting and perhaps more progressive than the traditionally progressive um, uh, uh, neo avant-garde that that we have been uh, living on as a as a discipline. Uh, so I, I am. I am very uh, excited uh, now, and, and in a way, the exercise for, for today was looking at our own work and, and see what uh, in our own work was uh, uh, conservative, conservative uh, 
uh, and, and I don't know whether, whether uh, it is progressive conservative, this is a question on our own work, but maybe also on the work of, uh, of others. But, but le le let's say if we were able to define architecture in the equivalent of, of constitutionally low uh, adaptation, evolutionary theory, uh, or even perhaps the true uh, Tory and, and Republican values, which have to do uh, almost with, with uh, a culture that evolves very slowly, that there is no uh, belief that you can simply change things uh, overnight, uh, as perhaps uh, some of the, the, the modernist uh, prophets uh, were, were trying to, to say, and whether that may uh, eventually become an attractive, uh, progressive uh, form of, uh, of uh, architecture. Uh, and so, what, I mean, and in that sense, maybe can we reclaim symmetry, hierarchy, order, gravity, uh, regularity, compactness, uh, repetition, and detail uh, as, uh, as a way of, uh, of inaugurating uh, a, a new type of, uh, of architecture. Uh, <clears throat> so that, that, that is, uh, and maybe a new type of uh, even uh, uh, avant-garde. Can, can, we, can we try to, <clears throat> Uh, to uh, talk about conservation uh, in a way that is actually progressive uh, uh, rather than than regressive, and that maybe doesn't doesn't fall back into the strands of the neocons of the American sorts, the neo evangelists, the, the the intelligent design defenders, uh, and so on and so forth. So, so I mean, one one project that I found in the archive that that also became uh, uh, suddenly interesting because of the COVID, and it's a project that that we designed, but we didn't finish. So the facade was, was finally implemented by somebody else. We resigned because the, it was part, part of a campus of uh, justice uh, uh, in, in Madrid. And, and it was actually the morgue. It was the, 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 the future uh, uh, Institute of Me Legal Medicine in, in Madrid that, uh, that we got to build. And then we pulled out and the whole uh, City of Justice uh, project Collapse, but but the idea of the project uh, was to make this kind of uh, sphere, um, <clears throat> which uh, which obviously is entirely symmetrical and, and has also a spherical uh, atrium inside. So uh, symmetry, uh, regularity. I mean, uh, symmetry is something that I mean we we actually don't do projects that are not not symmetrical these days. Uh, <laughs> to to give you an idea of how uh, uh, how convinced we are about this. Uh, maybe of a, of a neoconservative uh, architecture, no, and simply because because uh, symmetry was something that that was discarded by by modernists. Modernists associated it to 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 the representation of authority, stability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But symmetry uh, as a performance, as a performative form, is actually much more uh, much more interesting. So what was in interesting about this project is that it was abandoned. It was partly built, uh, finished the the, the facade by another architect, abandoned in 2008, uh, decayed uh, for a long time. This is the section with this kind of internal atrium where all the, the kind of uh, uh, rituals uh, around people dying uh, uh, was supposed to, to happen. Uh, and this was the, was the building. It was this kind of, I mean, looking at it uh, now, it looks like a coronavirus, actually. Uh, but uh, but uh, what, what is uh, interesting is that so that morgue was built, uh, but was empty and rotting away uh, for uh, 12 years. And suddenly, because of the, the these were some of the, the ideas of the, of the project. I'm, I'm not going to, to explain the project, uh, but, uh, and this is, this is the, the building built uh, and abandoned immediately. So it's, it's in, in a state of almost uh, ruin, but, but in, in the basement, it has this. It had, uh, it had uh, uh, mortuary chambers, fridges for bodies, 250 of them. And Mad Madrid, as you know, was uh, heavily affected by, uh, by COVID. And, and so they ran out of space for, for bodies. And suddenly the project was revived as the morgue to store the bodies of uh, COVID. Uh, and it has been working uh, for the last uh, few uh, months uh, as such. These are the, the chambers. Uh, they, they, they had to kind of de-rust uh, de them because they were already uh, rusted. So this, this, is, uh, this is maybe a kind of uh, interesting 
um, uh, opportunistic uh, uh, phenomenon. Uh, another, uh, I mean, I, I, I can stop here if you want, uh, Don. Uh, yeah, I, why don't we, maybe we'll uh, stop there uh, from yeah. the presentation point, but uh, you know, it may be that there are some other images that need to come back in, so we can switch yeah, it's, back basically, and forth. I mean, the, the, the things that I collected are uh, profoundly conservative buildings, energetically, uh, uh, materially, uh, with a great attention to the detail, uh, mostly or all of them symmetrical, without uh, all gravitatory, with no cantilevers. Cantilevers are forbidden now in the office uh, because they are too easy and too conventional, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I mean, I can basically, if you want, show the the images as we, well. We we talk so that you see at least the feeling of uh, of what I mean by maybe a neocon, and, and of course I I, I say this with uh, with uh, caution because it's not that I I like the neocons, but but I like the title of neocon, some sort of neoconservativism in architecture as the new uh, progressive and as the new avant-garde basically. Yeah. Okay, why don't you, I mean, maybe go through just showing the images, but I'm, I'm going to ask you a question about that then, because I want to come back. I mean, for me, this, uh, you know, it's interesting that for me, there's a really clear, although, you know, etymologically, it sounds almost the same, but when you, the, for me, there's a profound difference between saying conservationist or conservative, mm -hmm. you know, that the conservationists who are looking at conserving, uh, the natural uh, environment or look at preserving maybe its heritage or something is one aspect. But the conservatives, particularly as a political designation, are totally different. And in fact, of, um, oftentimes they're in complete opposition. So, you know, the Sierra Club, uh, the Audubon Wildlife Society, these are conservationists and they're almost always in conflict with the conservatives who actually in the act of being a conservative, have no problem in destroying the environment, have no problem in using up all the resources and stuff. So, you know, for me there, in, in your text, you kind of move back and forth between the word conservation and the word conservative. And so mm -hmm. I'm wondering, uh, you know, do you, do you see that conflict? Do you see that as an yeah, issue? Yeah, yeah, I mean, of course, that, that's why, that's why I, I, I like to talk about conservation. Uh, I mean, the title is, is conservation, uh, or at least I think that's what I said, uh, uh, is not is not conservative. And this is why, why I I I am intrigued by this idea and whether conservation can ever be progressive. And obviously, it can be progressive in the sense that many of the the, the, the political uh, strands that you are referring to, the kind of ecologists, etc., are are talking about conservation and are, are in some ways, uh, you know, pro progressively oriented. I don't know whether they are, whether we can say that they are progressively or not. That, that's what, what intrigues me about this, uh, this question, because, because it wasn't it more exciting when we thought that we could actually change the world and, and we had this kind of fantastic uh, feeling Architects, I mean, I mean, people from my generation and maybe your generation, which is pretty much the same. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, we maybe you could wait. sorry. Let me just interrupt. Do you want to take off the sh uh, the share screen so that then the the people will have us to to see? Yeah. Okay. That's good. So um, yeah, I mean the this. You know, I, I, certainly I wouldn't necessarily say that, that, that all conservationists are progressives, but there's clearly a, a really, from my point of view, a clear distinction between the conservative and advancing a conservative story. I mean, it was, I found it very interesting in your text, you bring up uh, the notion of true Tory and yeah. Republican values. And, you yes. know, the Tories, you know, particularly from the British political system, yeah. are you know, their, their motto is uh, God, King or Queen and country, you know, the last, I mean, effectively nationalism in, in a certain yes. way. So in part of the, your, your text, I mean, one of the things that came up to me was this whole question of the difference between uh, sort of nationalism or the, 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 the advance of nationalism versus something like patriotism. Um, 
You know, there's a, it's funny, you know, in this lockdown, I ended up ordering a whole bunch of little books and Penguin has this wonderful little series where uh, Penguin modern books and they're little pamphlets. They're, they're usually not more than 50 pages long and they're collections of different people. And there's this one little collection, which is, uh, you probably, well, you can't see this because I've got the virtual screen on, but uh, it's from George Orwell and it's called Notes on Nationalism. Yeah. And it was written in 1945 and it's a fantastic book in terms of his um, distinction between the difference between nationalism and patriotism. You know, that from his point of view, patriotism is a defensive attitude. It's about protecting, yes, your country, your homeland, your, your culture, and so on. So. Whereas nationalism is, a, is an offensive attitude. It's about trying to change everybody else from a particular point of belief. So I wonder if within this sort of mix between uh, conservatism, between conservation, you know, again, conservation is a, a defensive act, whereas conservatism is actually a fairly offensive act. It's trying to make everybody else like you are. It's about yes. trying to convert other people and trying to force an attitude onto the world. So. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the reason why I, I, I am very interested in this kind of true blue or, or true Republican values, as they, they, they say uh, here, and, and, uh, and you know, the, everything is, is very mixed, no? because uh, between somebody like, like uh, Steve Bannon, for example, is, uh, is, is toying with the idea of, uh, of nationalism. I mean, Trump, the, the, the kind of economic nationalism is, is what they are. Uh, they are they are promoting uh, is going back to the idea of nation uh, as opposed to the idea of the global uh, which is the enemy that the kind of uh, neoliberal world uh, is uh, is the new enemy the global world uh, is the new enemy uh, i am i am uh, uh, very clearly and, and 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 apologetically a globalist and i and i don't think uh, i'm going to change uh, mm-hmm. now so so in, in many ways I, I, I have a, a position there, <clears throat> uh, but, but I, am, I am quite intrigued by this new situation in which uh, maybe, maybe coming from that uh, background, uh, we are going to have perhaps to learn to not, not to fly, not to, not to go that far, maybe not even to operate in, in another place, uh, maybe, maybe to re- restrict our our radius of action to to a close uh, area. Uh, I, 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 as as difficult as I find this uh, personally, I, I think is something uh, interesting to uh, to consider. And and, and basically, uh, the other reflection I, I had uh, around this uh, is that that the, the opposite. I mean. The, the fascists, in some ways, are, are incredibly, or were, or are, in, incredibly uh, progressive. I mean, the, these are people like the, 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 the kind of militant communists. They, they think that they can change the world like that. They, they can come up with an idea and, and, and find a way of implementing it onto reality. And I find this uh, a, a fantastic uh, uh, conviction, um, uh, which which I think is uh, uh, is uh, maybe part of what uh, what modernism uh, also did to have that con- conviction that we can change the world. Uh, but then there are these other people that that maybe are are more in favor of. A world that that can change, but not very much. Which is mm. even even from a legal perspective, you know, in in, in England, uh, the casuistic is more important than the law. Yeah. In France, yeah. the law is crucial. So you can set up a law and change the world. Yeah. yeah. You can you can you can change things like that. But in England, is is not the law. It's like what did this guy said uh, uh, before, and w- what is the precedent for this case? So in some ways. The law evolves slowly. Mm. The world mm. evolves slowly, and I have the feeling that 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 you cannot necessarily say that this is utterly 
conservative. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it may be also progressive on a different speed or, or progressive on a different mode. Mm -hmm. And I suspect that in this new era, that, that, uh, that progressive uh, conservatism is going to become more effective uh, and maybe even more interesting to practice than the, than the idea that we can change the cities like that, that we can change the world, that tabula rasa, et cetera, et cetera, the things that we have grown with, that the world is, uh, is all one uh, 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 and that we can keep operating like that also as, uh, as architects. But how does that, I mean, there's two parts, I'll, I'll come back to another one in a moment, but uh, in that last formulation that you talk about, uh, in some ways what you're saying uh, is, or at least my interpretation is that, in some ways what you're talking about is that we're dealing with complex formulations. It's not the simplistic, either we're gonna change the world because everything's wrong, or here's a new methodology and it's going to superimpose itself on it. But in some ways, you know, going back to the way you began, you know, the, the postmodernism, certainly post-structuralism, uh, you know, this idea that, that there are no fixed and eternal truths, there are, there are interpretations and there are understandings, was in itself a, you know, a series of uh, philosophical political positions that tried to acknowledge the, the, the multiplicity of, of positionings that there isn't the the red or the the blue or the, yes, yes, but or the, the white and so the question would be to what degree is wanting to you know and, and i i take your point about the post-truth age and and such but is is the desire for a a more absolutism really what we're talking about a more ab absolute... Uh, a more absolutism, that is, again, being yeah. able to define absolute truths. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that's, that, that's, what, that's, what, uh, that's why I started with, with this idea of, uh, of going back to some sort of ontological uh, thinking, or, or, of uh, moving away from phenomenology, of moving away from uh, perception, or mo of moving away from, uh, 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 from performa performance in the, in the kind of theatrical uh, sense or in the, in the sense of moving, moving away from, if you want, from affect uh, uh, mm. towards something that is, that is more intrinsically part of, of, the, of the thing. Uh, I mean, to, to, to kind of talk uh, or, or, or talk in some sort of philosophical way. So, so the, 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 the idea that, uh, that, that we can keep uh, working as architects with this kind of wonderful capacity to explore diversity, which is basically what postmodernism did. It, it, was, it was a diversity that was almost um, free floating, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to talk about, uh, uh, about uh, the origin of, uh, of postmodernism, the kind of free floating signifier, the, the, the fact that reality is something that we can assemble, uh, and we can we can put a, a, a Rococo building next to a, a Romanic building and, and a Romanesque building, and 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 that's fine. And and you know, modernism is not the only way of making cities of making architecture. The the, the, the critique of uh, of the postmoderns was 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 about a, a diversity, but it was a diversity that was was in some ways accepting its own fakeness uh, happily. Mm -hmm. And, exp and exploring it. Mm. Uh, and, and I think that it was, I mean, I'm not saying this, the, the people who, who were engaged into that were in any way uh, wrong. I, I think that that was something that was uh, interesting at the time and, and produced maybe some interesting uh, work. I don't think that that idea of diversity as some, some kind of uh, <clears throat> A proliferation of uh, of things like like uh, random proliferation of, of things is something that we can uh, that we can uh, any longer uh, subscribe to if we want to to be given a, any role any agency in the world that is that is uh, that is starting now mm -hmm. uh, and and is the opposite I think the postmodernist uh, the, the pomo 
uh, is is actually in some ways also op opposite or contrary to uh, contrary to the conservative. I mean, the, Posmo, the, the Poma was no, by no means uh, conservative. Mm -hmm. It was it was uh, it was happy. It was uh, you know about the possibility of changing things, of of doing extravagant things, of getting things from everywhere. Uh, sure. of being sure. able to synthesize this kind of new brave world of uh, of infinite uh, diversity and uh, possibility and but i, I think, think yeah and, and but i think it you know i mean there's always been i, I believe this there's a uh, i wouldn't call it confusion but a, 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 a mixing up you know i mean in architecture whenever we talk about postmodernism it's really it's quite clear what we're talking about you know in terms of formal uh, evidence in terms of uh, operations and so forth. In philosophy, postmodernism or post-structuralism or the sort of after uh, effects of kind of pure rationalism, let's say, are much more diverse and they're not based on uh, a kind of, I mean, from my point of view, they're, you know, they're the same word and they're almost the opposite actions. Whereas, I, as you said, I think with postmodernism in architecture, it is a kind of free flow. Everything has equal value. Anything can be here. Whereas I've always understood postmodernism and philosophy is a kind of deeply critical exercise, which does challenge the question of absolute authorities and absolute uh, truths, uh, but right. is based on substantiation. And so one of the things, and you mentioned this, and this is one of the interesting parts of your presentation, because it's certainly something that uh, has come up uh, for, for us here in Australia, is this question of a return to evidence, of a question of a return to expertise. You know, we're seeing, you know, I mean, Australia has done an amazing job of, uh, there's been 103 deaths in the whole country. Uh, you know, something like seven, a little over 7,000 incidences of infection. And part of that is because very quickly, the whole country, both at a federal level and at a state level, agreed to listen to the experts and yeah. follow the advice of the experts. And it's interesting, I mean, you, you brought this up, and I think that is a really important, hopefully, I mean, I mean for me, that's an aspirational consequence of, of this terrible pandemic. Mm -hmm. And yet in America, it's almost as if it's still, yeah, you can choose to believe the experts if it helps your case, but you can choose not to believe the experts if it doesn't help your case. So, you know, it, it's interesting that the way this is played out and, and the degree to which it either yeah, reinforces I mean, that, 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 that's, or not. that has only kind of demonstrated that the, the kind of uh, importance of expertise, importance of, uh, of, uh, of evidence, importance of, uh, of truth. I mean, th mm. there are certain things that, you know, this is almost like the return, the, 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 the COVID, I was telling my students that the COVID is like the return of proxemics. Do you, do you remember proxemics? Proxemics in the- Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. These guys, uh, you, what, what was the name? Uh, the, um, I can't remember now the name of the guy. Uh, Rap Rappaport, uh, yeah. Amos Rappaport, mm -hmm. studying, you know, how certain cultures uh, establish certain distances and the Japanese stay away and the, the Spanish are on, on top of each other all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so the, the, there are kind of cultural um, uh, cultural differences also. It doesn't mean that, that, that these types of expertise are going to erase uh, necessarily difference. In fact, I think maybe maybe they will intensify them. And, and I think this is, for me, one of the one of the important things about this reconsideration of the detail uh, or this idea of almost an architecture under the radar, where where you don't. Uh, you don't obviously display, but actually when you look at something, there were some examples that I wanted to show you that, that, that were about, about doing a building that, uh, that looks, uh, will look uh, soon like a, almost like a Cesar Pelli, but it has something weird to it because of the malleons being tilted four degrees systematically, but almost imperceptibly. Yeah. Uh, so, so, the, and and they, there are there are oh, there are other technical reasons why why this happens, but uh, or financial reasons mainly. But but uh, the the idea that we need to to start uh, teaching uh, people 
because finally, you know, postmodernism was invented by architects, and and eventually we convinced everybody that POMO was great. So the, the uh, you know, 20 years after the first postmodernist architects were doing weird stuff, uh, eventually people follow. Uh, and the same thing happened with uh, with you know neo neo modernism or neo uh, contemporary or or however or the constructivists. So eventually people catch up with uh, with things. I I believe that one of the things that we that we need to develop now as part of, of this uh, progressive uh, conservation is is a, is a new attention to the detail and a new. Uh, uh, new concern with with the precision of of how we we draw things or how we specify uh, things. What the, what are the U values? Things that 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 are going to be very difficult to 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 explain to the people because people are in in some ways the public sensibility has been expanded so so far over the last uh, three decades that nobody will 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 be able. To to, to get a, a very sophisticated sound when somebody is, is honking uh, at sure. an incredible uh, volume next, next, next door. Yeah. So yeah. for me, the, the project of, of uh, trying to develop a, a different sensibility that, that, uh, that uh, is perhaps close up uh, or close attention Sensibility is something that that is uh, is maybe a, an interesting possibility. Maybe that's some of the things that I wanted to uh, to explain in the projects. But maybe there, there will be other opportunities to uh, to explain. This is the first time that I actually try to look at my own work under this scope, yeah. and it's actually yeah. quite interesting to see to 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 think about it like uh, like this. Yeah. Let's, uh, we've, we've had some questions that have come in. Um, I'm just going to kind of scroll through quickly. There's one uh, that's come in from an architect uh, in Bangladesh, and he's, he or she has actually presented a, a few questions. And they have to do with this question of, uh, of preservation, of conservation, of heritage, of you know, what are some of the, the, the attributes that uh, within the built nature, how does the, you know, the professional deal with uh, the engagement with the environment and the, the destruction or change of the environment, but at the same time, also the preservation of, uh, of heritage, of, uh, of the workflow, but in a country where uh, clearly from an economic point of view, there's huge pressures to try to advance, there's huge pressures to try to modernize as it were uh in this guy so is you know coming well, out of out of this uh pandemic uh are we going to see that change in a different way i i don't know whether whether that is is going to be particularly related to the to the pandemic but i i think for me and again that was a project because we have been involved in in, in a number of uh, refurbishments of of all the or all buildings I, as a good globalist, I am much less interesting in 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 preservation as as uh, cultural preservation. I, I think that in some ways, when you go down the route of cultural preservation, uh, you become conservative. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's necessary to do that to some degree. But I think, generally speaking. Is a is a dangerous path to to follow, uh, but I think I I, I I like I mean it's a pity I didn't have time to, to 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 look at this because there were some projects where where that conflict between between um, uh, cultural preservation and the preservation of sheer matter. So buildings are are almost like mountains or like. Uh, I remember Jack Herzog used to say that about Tate Modern. Like, why would you change a building that is like a mountain? You just kind of do things to it, but you don't, you don't, you don't change it. And I, I, I think that the idea that buildings are are chunks of matter that are maybe meaningless and are identityless. I'm, 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 I'm putting it as a way of 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 explaining how I think that that a, a con 
conservation uh, conservation attitude uh, towards, for example, embedded and embodied energy, uh, because obviously every time you, you 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 make a building, you consume a lot of energy. That's why architecture is unfortunately becoming a politically incorrect uh, activity uh, these days, because we uh, we are simply consuming uh, resources. But but if you look at uh, at uh, the existing urban capital as uh, uh, in that sense as as simply a way. Uh, or a, or a, or a uh, reservoir of urban matter or, or building matter that, that has already been there and there is no reason to, to, uh, to demolish it uh, and to change it ent entirely, but actually what you need to do is to re-inhabit re it without necessarily uh, preserving its identity. I mean, we, we did the, the Palacinema in Locarno uh, finished it a, a couple of years and, and we actually won the competition because we were the most conservative uh, entry. So we said we are going to keep the whole the whole skin of the building integrally uh, as it is. But but obviously what we did was was to I mean the, uh, we didn't we didn't try in any way to replicate the kind of neo class the local neo classic. We actually were imposed certain details by by the 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 conservationists the, the, or the preservationists the local preservationists that we couldn't we couldn't we didn't like them because we actually wanted to uh, use the, this kind of physical entity uh, as if it was devoid of any associated uh, uh, identities mm. and i i think this is a way in which in which maybe a, a certain conservative uh, attitude or conservational attitude, or how can you say it, uh, is not necessarily a conservative attitude. Yeah. I think yeah. for me, the, 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 the tricky, the tricky conservation, uh, the tricky conservation or the tricky conservatism is uh, is actually the one that starts with identity. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna read a, a question here. This is a question uh, or comments and questions. I think it's very appropriate. Uh, it's from someone uh, is Razvan Gilik Michu. Maybe oh, I know. Right? It wasn't yeah. a student. <laughs> okay. Well, he says he says Alejandro loved the last point you made. So this was uh, during the presentation, towards the end of the presentation. He says, uh, I think Jeff Kepnes said once that you are one of the few architects out there who's hip enough to be square. So, and he <laughs> says, uh, I want to take the neocon notion to the argument of, quote, heroic architecture versus, quote, generic architecture. Most cities around the world are over 95%, quote, generic urban fabric that rarely get talked about, yet if done right, it would probably have been the most impact. So the question is, do you foresee a shift in the discipline towards embracing the notion of generic topology done well as a way to change the world rather than the far fewer heroic outliers? Or well, outliers? I, I mean, I, I think Rem has already been talking about the generic and I mean, the generic is a, is a well-known and exploited uh, theory and I think it's an interesting one. Uh, the generic does have something to do with uh, with what I am uh, I I am talking about about the, this kind of uh, or, or let's say the generic can be conservative can, can be conservative or is often conservative because because it's is the redeployment of solutions that have been already uh, verified and and therefore they are safe. Um, so yes, the, the generic the, the generic can be maybe one of the of the components of uh, of this uh, progressive conservatism. If you if you if you want, I mean, there, there are certain efficiencies of doing generic buildings uh, in terms of, for example, embodied energy, uh, <clears throat> but um, because they they rely. On large-scale systems, uh, on repetition, and, and a number of of other traits of buildings that that maybe were not so fashionable um, a few years ago. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know whether I I, I am 
answering this question um, effectively. But but you know, Rasman was my student. Mm. I, yeah, yeah. I always, I always uh, tell tell my students. I don't know whether I told him or or maybe he missed it. Uh, but uh, one of the things that I always uh, say is that that the most revolutionary projects that you can do are those that get close enough to the to the conventional so that they become believable mm -hmm. uh, and for me the, the biggest example of that is actually archigram no i i, I think mm -hmm. archigram archigram is the epitome of um, of what in of the of the um, extravagant uh, how do they call them the in 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 england there is a there is a very uh, uh, very good word for for this the, the the people who 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 afford themselves to be extravagant to be extraordinary systematically no and uh -huh. there is a there is a, a um, eccentric eccentric okay so okay. the english eccentrics no so so archigram are english eccentrics that that made fantastic things and and you know it it, it uh, they kind of uh, possibly invented a, a new world, but a new world that everybody, including themselves, knew that that was never going to happen. And instead, you know, uh, Richard Rogers and Norman Foster, the lords who were basically around, uh, kind of yeah. looking at what these guys were doing, were actually focusing on something else and actually were doing doing the the. The, the things and I, and I think eventually maybe are I mean it's difficult to say who contributed more to transform the world but I prefer to be Norman Foster than Peter Cook okay well let's <laughs> let's keep it we'll, we'll keep it in, in in the British domain for a moment here's a here's a question from Alan Pert Professor Alan Pert who's here at the, the faculty he says the nationalist uh, counterpoint to globalization is what we are seeing with Brexit, and in some in some respects, culture is being reinvented in a completely different way in some parts of the world. So the question is, what is your position on homogeneity? Do you think we still need to resist homogeneity in the context of a progressive conservatism? And are you suggesting, for instance, that there are different possibilities to engage with these forces of introversion and conservatism through architecture? Yeah, I, I've been discussing this with with Jeffrey Kidney lately. Uh, I I do not. Uh, le, le, let's say at this at this point, I'm I'm not I'm not afraid of um, of homogeneity. I, I think that in some ways, homogene, homogeneity may be a very good antidote uh, against the the diversity per se, the diversity, um, the kind of uh, s s simple diversity uh, that, that, uh, that I think some recent architecture um, has been uh, supporting. I mean, in some ways, if, if you believe that there is a, that there is a <clears throat> That there is a certain way of doing things. There is a certain truth. Like modernists believe that you have to make buildings on stilts or on columns and have uh, long uh, windows, and that could happen almost anywhere. And we know that uh, that it doesn't happen the same uh, in in India than than in in London. Uh, and that was basically the the critique. But but nevertheless, I, I think. That this uh, scientific term that that I am I am uh, interested in um, will produce. I don't know whether 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 the word is uh, homogeneity, but it will certainly uh, build uh, continuities because finally, you know, an air conditioning system works the same in in London and in in Delhi. It's just that that it relates in an entirely different way with the with the local environment and therefore maybe in some in some places it doesn't it, it shouldn't exist or it should exist in an entirely different different way but the the rules of raising the temperature of a, of a room uh, the scientific rules are 
are common, mm -hmm. whether that is whether that is homogeneous or 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 diverse. Uh, I I don't know, but I am prepared to risk uh, homogeneity uh, in order to escape from from this kind of whimsical diversity that that the the, the profession has been uh, has been operating on for for a long time. Okay, so what, we've got time just for one more question, um, and this one is from Scott Woods, uh, who's also on our faculty here, and he he, he writes about says the idea of the up close or the new project for architectural being about the detail is interesting. But he wants to know, is your interest in the act of detailing the, uh, uh, is it in the, is your interest in the act of detailing or the effects of detailing or both? Where does the question of disciplinarity lie in this? I mean, is there something specific about that, you know, from an architectural point of view and this notion of detailing? Yeah, I mean, they, they probably, uh, I, I could have uh, maybe shown some, some examples of this, or I was try preparing to, to, to show some examples of this, but, but I think maybe I showed some one slide, which is the slide where there is the, the culture of the, 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 the kind of Frampton tectonics book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, and the kind of uh, calculation of uh, of the temperatures uh, as they go through a, a malleon uh, yeah. in a curtain wall, no? Yeah. And so yeah. the, the, this is uh, what, what I I think is is very exciting now is that we have tools that enable us to see these kind of gradients of temperature through a malleon, and that may actually. Um, help us to slightly, if we focus on that. I mean, for that we obviously need to become experts in malleons, experts in the bridging, experts in new values, experts in tolerances, and 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 things that that are perhaps uh, very technical and outside the the, the more traditional uh, domains of the of the discipline. But that, that for me are really the 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 big opportunity now and, and the whole uh, the whole work of the on the envelope is very much about that it's, it's very much about trying to look at details not not as as tectonic uh, you know compositions uh, and experiences and you know phenomena uh, but but as, as the result of the convergence of multiple ecologies, of of, of costs, of um, of thermal performance, uh, climate uh, views, uh, and so on and so forth. And yeah. and so when you look at an architectural problem uh, uh, from from this kind of more technical perspective, I think that that and, and not from a tectonic mm. perspective is where, where I I think that there are maybe great opportunities to evolve the discipline as opposed to remain uh, in that that kind of world of uh, of the poetic and the construction and the you know you have this guy in australia no? uh, the bush architect yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah we have that a lot yeah, it's, it's, yeah yeah it's good i mean i'm not i'm not i'm not saying i i think he's, he's a very good athlete but but i i i I don't like that discourse. Basically, yeah. I don't think that discourse. That discourse is 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 straight conservative. It's about identity. It's about uh, human experience. And and I, I think when when we start looking at with a flair at the at the way a, a facade uh, looks, I, I think we are more likely to find interesting ways of tampering with uh, with details that that can can actually. Uh, connect the, the building to much wider ecologies. Yeah. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, it's been fantastic. Uh, I'm glad we got over the uh, technical difficulties at the beginning. Oh, well, that was scary. Yeah. It was very weird. That yeah, <laughs> but that's okay. But listen, we want to thank you very much for, I know it's late uh, back in New York right now, and nice we're putting this you. together. It's been fantastic. But as a way to end this again, thank you very much, Alejandro Zarapolo. Thank you very much for presenting this topic. And uh, 
we look forward to being able to continue it along. This, this has been recorded and it will be uploaded uh, in the next few days. So anybody can go back and dig into more detail uh, some of the polemics and the positions that are being placed here. Thank you much, Alejandro. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Ciao. Thank you.